All right, this is Steve, the Rogue Scholar. Folks, thank you for joining me today. Um, the title of this episode here is called Aftershocks. And the reason why we're calling it Aftershocks is because I don't think folks really, truly understand the impact of raising interest rates, right? Whether it be real or whether it just be a signal to industry to do various things that they maybe would not have done had the signal of interest rate hikes not tipped their hand. Now, <clears throat> one of the most important things to know is let's go back to Bill Clinton. Way back when Bill Clinton was um, president and he was in his last days as president, last year as president, they did some things. They had their surplus, which is really just removing a hell of a lot of money out of the economy. OK, it's not really having a stack of money sitting there. It's not like they created a surplus of money. What they did was they made a deficit in the private sector. That's really what happened under the Clinton era. And the problem was, is that you didn't feel it in the Clinton era. Right. It kind of was punted downstream to W. I know it's all the rage to hate on W and he's earned every bit of your scorn. But I think it's super important to hate people for exactly the right reasons, right? I think it's important to not hate them for fake reasons because the real reasons are usually adequate. They're deserving of your scorn. They're deserving of your hatred, okay? Unfortunately, there's just some grotesquely uninformed people that come up with the narratives. The problem is what we call lagging indicators, okay? And interest rates are definitely what we call a lagging indicator. When they put, I should say, the, the fallout from it, the aftershock of it is not going to happen in real time. It's going to happen out there, further out there, okay? And so by raising interest rates and by signaling to businesses that it's time to lay people off, and that's, that's what interest rates are intended to do. Raising interest rates are usually to defend the, the positive interest rate. This, this is tough for people to understand, but like when you set an interest rate target, when you set an interest rate on a uh, credit or you set an interest rate on the overnight window, you set an interest rate on treasuries, whatever, that interest rate is a signal. And if you're defending that, they may do certain things, raise taxes, cut spending, whatever, to defend that positive interest rate, positive being more than zero. When I say a positive interest rate, it means that there is an interest rate, not a zero interest rate policy. But you see places like Meta and Amazon and all these tech firms, Silicon Valley tech firms, way before the impacts of those interest rates are even felt, you see them laying people off. Why? Because they're going along to get along with the Fed and the Treasury and this combined purpose of bringing about massive unemployment. Larry Summers is, uh, you know, we really eviscerated that sack of shit the other day, but Larry Summers is busy telling people, ah, we need, we need to lay off about 10 million people to bring this inflation thing under control. Okay. So that's the orthodox. That's the standard line of thought. That's your vote blue, no matter who line of thought. That is your teabagger line of thought. That is your establishment line of thought, okay? Sadly, the left, which doesn't understand economics, will side with that, and they tend to be sound money leftists, which doesn't make sense. And then on the right side, they don't understand it any better. They're out there buying crypto. Just if you watch the ebbs and flows of the crypto cycle, it's a lagging indicator as well, okay? And so you see... When the tax returns cometh, they go up. When the tax re tax receipts come back, it plummets. Okay, it's interesting to watch the ebbs and flows of these things on the lag as it goes way further out than what you're expecting. Anyway, so back in the day when we saw interest rates really high it was in the 70s. So most of us, even me, gray beard, I get to hear all kinds of shit about being an old man now these days. Ah, eh, whatever. But I, I was too young to really understand what was going on during the Volcker era, during the Jimmy Carter 
um, shamble of a presidency, et cetera. And I know he's good for habitat with humanity, but don't let that color your understanding of him. He is the king of austerity. He brought austerity to America. Uh, Jimmy Carter was the first jackass to begin wearing the extra clothes on camera to tell everybody we got to stay warm. Let's go ahead and do our part. Let's cinch up our belts and get a little tighter and let's cut spending. That was Jimmy Carter. Okay. Don't forget it. Please don't forget it. I hate to remind you of public. All right. Anyway, so we're sitting here now on the precipice of the fallout of these interest rate hikes. Now, there's no guarantee that raising interest rates would necessarily in, require people to be laid off. There's nothing inherently that would make that a reality. In fact, if you went to grad school and you got your MBA, what a waste of money, right? If you went and got your MBA, they would tell you at a downturn, that's when it's time for you to retool your workforce, to get them trained and ready to go, to be ready to jump on the wave of the next opportunity. That's business speak 101. But that's not Fed speak 101. Fed speak is when they're sitting there putting out their, their signals to the public. Here's what we're doing. We're going to raise interest rates. We're going to raise them. That's the signal to lay people off. All right. So right here, right now, you see all the news ads coming out saying, hey, they're hiring even more people. There's more and more people being hired. You're like, oh, well, shit, the economy must be booming then, right? They are preparing once again. So I don't know if it's going to hit in four months. I don't know if it's going to hit in six months. I don't know if it's going to be a year. But the problem is, is that you'll forget about these hikes today unless they keep hiking them, which is what it sounds like they're going to do. Okay. You'll forget about the hikes until all of a sudden the bomb goes off and you'll wonder why all these layoffs are occurring. Okay. And it's going to come as a direct result of the reactions to interest rate hikes, not necessarily the interest rate hikes. I'm going to keep telling you that back and forth. It may sound redundant, but there's a reason I've got to reinforce with you that it's not necessary to lay people off just because the interest rates went up. This is code between parties that this is what we're looking for you to do. We're looking for you to create this because it'll help us bring down inflation. Okay. So here we are right here, right now. And the fed has no idea how far they have to raise interest rates up to create this because they're not going to see the effects right of way. The effects won't be felt for a long time in the future. So they keep raising rates because, well, they didn't come down yet. Well, no kidding. It's not an immediate thing. Oh, they're going to look at it again in a month or so. And it's going to be like, oh, it didn't come down yet again. We got to raise more interest rates. It didn't come down again. And by the time they get it to where it does, they're going to have to do something radical to bring it back to life. Because what we've got here is a number of things. Number one, the federal government has literally stopped spending money into the economy. It said, no, nope, we, we've got inflation. The horrible, wretched, evil fucks on the right think that we're supposed to, you know, that uh, printing money, jackasses, spending money creates inflation. So we got to appease the morons of the teabagger variety. And we got to deal with the morons, the Wall Street speculators within the Democratic Party to say, well, you know, we printed all this money. Now we got to got to pay it for it. We got to cinch up. We got to eat our peas. Each of these groups is playing to this tune. They're kind of marching to this beat. They know what's expected. But with them cutting spending, raising interest rates, and going for the layoff that is the three-headed dragon of austerity that is the clara mate three-headed capital order the invent uh the invention and the institutionalization of austerity the three-headed dragon fiscal policy we've cut spending interest rate hikes we're going to try and create mass layoffs and then the last piece will be the layoffs should have probably done that for the layoffs how do you fight this? I don't know, right? Because we can't get our own people to listen to us, much less 
anyone else. And I think we make a grave error believing that these politicians and stuff are just simply ignorant, that they don't know. I think we're making a grave mistake that they don't know. And you see them actively saying various things. Oh, we should do this or, oh, we should do that. But they're not actively fighting to stop this. They're not actively fighting to say there's a different way. They're not actively going out there and doing price controls or any other bill. And that includes Bernie Sanders folks. Okay. So you've got an institutionalized situation that Congress isn't willing to address, that the president isn't willing to address, that the Fed and the Treasury are working hand in glove to make true. And I ask you, all you people that literally still suckle into the idea that you can vote your way to prosperity, I ask you with a straight face, you must keep a straight face when you answer the question. You cannot smile. You can't realize you're full of shit and answer it anyway. You've got to look me in the eye and tell me straight up how you expect you're voting your way to fixing this. I got time. And I'm eager to hear people tell me how they're going to vote their way to the promised land. Okay. Right. Educating the people to me is about a recruitment to revolution. Because once you realize that there are alternatives to this, once you realize that this telegraphing of these uh, events is meant to set industry into motion for a far off thing that won't happen tomorrow, won't happen the next day, it probably happen in six months or whatever. Maybe it's not that far off. I don't know. But once you realize that you can't vote your way out of that, you're left with two things. Either you just accept it and you don't do anything about it or you fight back. And to many, and this, it hurts my soul when I see naive people tell me that they're going to door knock for a candidate so that they can get more progressives in there. You're not voting your way out of this. People are going to die from this. This is the deal. When you hear about layoffs, when you hear about joblessness, and you do your homework, and you don't rely on someone else, you do your homework. When you recognize that layoffs create pain, suffering for families, and when you realize that people that barely had ends covered before, beg, borrow, and then stealing, you realize that they're no longer even in position to do that. And you still have the gall to say, vote blue, vote for summer, vote for Pedro, whatever. You still have the gall to tell them, we just gotta, we just gotta vote for a few more progressives. It'll make it all better. When you have that kind of childlike understanding of the world you're living in, it's impossible to make a difference, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you a story. You don't, probably doesn't mean much to you, but I'm sure some of you, in fact, I just got off the phone with a friend before this live stream talking about family members that don't pay a bit of attention to anything we have to say. My case, I talked to my little brother. My little brother doesn't believe anything that I say at all. He talks to a random friend at work and damn it, they know everything there is to know about economics, about communism, about socialism, about whatever. Whatever it is, this random person who they don't know anything about holds more, um, more sway. And I'm like, Brian, dude, check it out, man. I've got these experts here. I'm talking. Look, this is the deal. Doesn't care what I have to say at all. Zero agency with this man. Zero standing. I can't even have the conversation. He's already sure I'm wrong. Well, within this space, I've got people telling me, don't criticize the left. Don't lecture the left. But the problem is the left is drinking mother's milk from right-wing 
sources and they don't even realize it. Their economics are horrid. Literally using the exact same thinking that Republicans and libertarians use. And they don't recognize that they're giving gravitas to the very same thing I just described. Where they are now part of the problem because they've just accepted this as normal. And then rather than dig deeper and learn more, it's just like, oh, they're wasting their taxes. They're doing this or they're doing that. And they get all hot around the collar and they say things. And it's like, look, where we are as a country in moving leftward, we are very nascent. We're very baby. We're very much a juvenile in this. We're not even a juvenile. We're still an infant. Most people have no understanding of the system. They have no understanding of economics, and they have even less an understanding of the propaganda machine they're dealing with. Or worse, they think they're so in tune with the propaganda that they believe the lizard people are coming any minute now. Either way, you've got a situation where the truth, for some reason, isn't spicy and titillating enough to generate kind of unity, solidarity, a solid fist approach where we can win together, a class analysis, any of that. And so as a result of being excommunicated from the conversation, to be economically sound is a guarantee you're not going to get invited to the panel discussions because they want to have a bunch of people on the panel that go, yeah, man, they're just screwing us, man. Yeah, they're just pocketing money in the government. Government do anything for a buck. Government deletes the money, dude, at, dude, whatever. That They can't hear that. They don't want to hear that. They've got their answer. Their team has their answer. And anything you say contrary to that is rejected. So the idea of reaching new people, reaching out and expanding to the 300 plus million other Americans that are not trapped in YouTube or Twitter freaking cult wars, okay? You've got to reach them somehow or another. And if they're not where you are, you're not reaching them. In other words, if you're not zeroed in on your YouTube channel, you're not hearing it. They're only hearing MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, whatever. And then you've got to have agency within that space. Somebody's got to lay their hand on you and say, this guy knows what he's talking about. You should listen to him. And the reality is, is that in the end, right now, because we don't have a real left in this country, and the little bit of left that we do have in this country is timid or batshit fucking crazy and confusing anti-establishment with being leftist. So we don't really have any kind of strength or power as of now to fight back. We won't organize around it. It's not sexy enough on the geopolitical scale to talk about. We're kind of trapped. And it's like, hey, everything feels fine. It's like, I imagine walking out onto a beach and the water has receded way the fuck out. And you see all these conch shells and all these cool things laying there. And you're like, oh my God, look, I found a treasure chest and whatever. And you turn back toward shore and you're looking back at the buildings and whatever on the beach. And you're like, wow, look what I found. And you're completely oblivious to the 200 foot wall of water that's coming at you for the tsunami as the water had pulled back. <clears throat> I just, for the life of me, I don't know how to make people stay tuned, right? Because again, you're hearing all this stuff about interest rate hikes now. Let's assume for a moment that the Fed stops its quantitative tightening, stops this interest rate hike that's exacerbating wealth inequality too, by the way, by paying people that already have money, lots of money while starving out the bottom by cutting off fiscal policy, by cutting spending at the government level, right? What if I told you real quickly that the only reason why the economy is not in recession right now is because of that weird interest income channel 
based on interest rate hikes. The, interestingly enough, this is the epitome of trickle-down economics. They are literally gambling and betting on the interest channel that pumps that money, pumps that money into the rich and hopes that it trickles down. That's the only reason why there's a positive net spending into the economy right now is because of that interest channel that the Fed has inadvertently opened up. Now, by doing that, it has thus put inflationary pressures on. The only way to really drive the kind of behavior that they're looking for is to ratchet it so high, like Volcker did in the 70s, that you literally kill the economy. And then you need the defibrillator to come out there, shock it back in. But today, you've got to remember this because it's going to take months for the fallout to come out. It's going to take fallout. And it's going to happen a long way off. Not right here, right now. And that's the point with Aftershocks. That's why we titled this show Aftershocks. I find it very, very challenging because, you know, when you don't see immediate reactions to what you're looking for, when you're not seeing the immediate return, it's hard to stay focused on something. Oh, my God. I am so glad you brought this up. This right here. Student debt, if the courts shoot down Biden's attempt at throwing a bone, which is barely a bone, I think it's 10000 for some and I think up to 20000 for others. But <clears throat> when that hits, people are going to be losing anywhere from like $50 a month up to thousands of dollars a month. <clears throat> I know my student debt loan will come in at 700 a month when it kicks in 700 a month. Okay. That is going to choke our purchasing power. That's not just cutting into extras. That's not just cutting into going to the movies with the family. That's going to be cutting into food and that's going to be cutting into gas and that's going to be cutting into lifestyle and everything basic stuff that might be starting to put people into a position where they put off medical help right so the fallout from these interest rate hikes it's going to be felt later it's going to have zero resistance we have zero resistance and worse the people that we could get on our side don't listen to economic discussions they don't listen they don't have interest in it have no interest in it whatsoever. I'm not joking. They would rather sit there and spend all day long punking on some other YouTube channel than actually learn this stuff and organize effectively around it. And I feel some type of way about that. Okay. I feel a little bit of a case of the ass about that. I'm a little bitter about that. Does it matter if I'm bitter? Uh, probably not. There's probably some leftist out there that even though I'm a leftist too, um, somehow or another is like, doesn't think my statement is very effective. But I've seen the do nothing version of this and it's less than effective. I've seen what transpires with the gathering of people and they swarm like green flies to shit on the food fights between youtube channels and literally ignore the economics how can you live in this society right now and know full well that maybe in 10 years 20 years 100 years when the revolution strikes how can you literally ignore everything happening around you and choose to say that it's not important? And then when families die, people die, literally. I mean, the people that have jobs today, good jobs today, will be the people that are hurting tomorrow. The people that are already hurting today will the people in the homelessness tomorrow. The people that are homeless 
will have even less. People are going to start dying. People are it, it, literally. It's not a joke. You see it in the UK. In fact, thank God for the UK. They went out there and they did a study. Okay. Did a study on austerity being social murder. If you think about it, Engels talked about austerity as social murder. Okay. We've known this as social murder forever, but for whatever reason, we think of this as nothing important to rally around, nothing important to talk about, nothing important to focus on. Instead, we're going to worry about Ukraine, which is important to worry about, but not at the exclusion of the war on the American people, the, the, the people that aren't making the decisions to give billions to Ukraine. Okay. The murder and suffering of austerity is so important to understand because this is war just like sanctions on Nicaragua or sanctions on Venezuela or sanctions on some other African or European country or Russia. Sanctions kill and austerity is in essence a domestic sanction and yet we treat it like it's just no big deal like just shit that happens man ah, what are you gonna do that's the fed we gotta blame the rothschilds right some dipshit will come up with the rothschilds to talk about instead of focusing on the real thing here they can't help themselves i see people trot out cynthia mckinney who is absolutely stone cold the Fed is owned by the Jews and the Rothschilds and the blood, blah, 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 the blood conspiracy. What is it? The blood oath or the blood feud or the blood whatever. I mean, just stupid fucking shit. It passes somehow or another. And there'll be 700 people watching. Like, People won't share the stuff, so naturally it doesn't get understood. People aren't alerted by YouTube about it, so they don't get a notification. People don't want to be lectured, but they will listen to a lecture by someone just randomly talking about the Jews. Because everybody's got that little anti-Semitic shit inside them. They would much rather hate the Jews than learn what's going on with austerity. They would much rather understand the Fed is private. The only thing private, federal about it is the name. It's, it's no more federal than Federal Express. But Jesus Christ. That's what you're up against. They think that that's a substitute for knowledge. And so we've got no army to fight back. The left gives up its place in the economic space before the fight even begins. And I don't understand it. I beg my friends, comrades, to stop being irresponsible and walking away from the economic conversation and embrace and engage it. Get rid of your Rothschild shit, for Christ's sake, and start being effective and learning stuff. Because we can't fight back and we can't teach our friends. And if we need to radicalize people with the truth, how are they going to get radicalized with the truth when you're busy telling about the Rothschilds? You know what I'm saying? I want you to understand we've got people that think they're so in tune with it that they're ready to push for dum -da -da -da, a balanced budget amendment. We got people that don't understand the history of the right trying literally, and they've been doing it successfully for 50 years working to this, where they sought out to get the judgeships and the local state, uh, the local mayor's houses and the dog catcher and the school boards, and then the governorships. And then they want to have a constitutional convention on the right to issue a balanced budget amendment. But people on the left who can't stay focused on economics long enough to be effective 
are busy to have a con-con, and most of them would say, yeah, it makes sense. The government shouldn't spend my hard-earned tax dollars on these things. I want a balanced budget, too. I want a balanced budget, too. And a balanced budget is austerity. It's baked in forcible austerity, which is what the triple constraint model, if you will, of fiscal austerity, literally interest rate austerity, and layoffs create. It's the same exact formula over and over and over and over and over again. And we cannot make people shut the fuck up about the Rothschilds and get serious about the learning, get serious about understanding why things are happening. You know, I tried to make a case so y'all can see this, right? If we had a federal job guarantee, just as an example, there would always be money going into the system always new money going into the system, always focused and targeted at the bottom. And then the people at the bottom would have the ability to not subsidize shit wages with a UBI, okay? But literally say, sorry, Walmart, I can't put in 40 hours at your place because I work a job guarantee in my local community where I'm helping the elderly play chess and I'm being a good friend to a, a kid that doesn't have a mom or something like that, or a dad, or, you know, going and working at the, uh, um, the local um, homeless shelter or whatever. I mean, these are things that were previously uncompensated that could be compensated that would do an end around to ensure that we don't bottom out. But alas, we can't get through that because some chucklehead will come through and say, but isn't a job guarantee forcing people? Isn't it like work fair? Is it? They don't bother to learn. They don't bother to read. They don't bother to give you enough respect to look at the information, to click a link, to figure it out. Instead, they got things to say. And then they run off and it's done. These aftershocks from the interest rates and the layoffs that will soon happen once it goes down are going to be things that you can look back on it March 24th. You could have looked on it in January because it would have been the same story. But if you look back at March 24th and say, Grumbine said something about this way back then, you're going to begin to realize the people that ignored this stuff we're basically giving you some opium to keep you out of the real fight, to keeping you away from real knowledge and to keeping you away from understanding the world around you. And we are stuck. We are stuck with each other. We're all in this Titanic together and there are nowhere near enough lifeboats regardless of the ones that they only filled with five people and let the poor people die, right? There are not enough lifeboats because our team won't focus on this. And if you look, why do you think, this is going to be a tough one for most people to realize. I've made the case so many times and I don't typically end up seeing people repeat it. And it bothers me because it's very serious. But if you go back, I don't know, what was it, um, three years ago, whenever Joe Biden's first State of the Union was, Joe Biden led off with China is our main threat. That was before any of this stuff had hit, right? And then, of course, we had to pile on with Russia <clears throat> because everybody knows Russia's the bad guys. Didn't you watch Rocky Four? Didn't you watch Ivan Drago? I must break you. Didn't you know that from Rambo when Rambo went to Vietnam and had to fight with the communist uh, Russians again? Didn't you know? Didn't you watch your Arnold Schwarzenegger movies? Didn't you get your propaganda correct yet? But that's what you're up against. And what's happening is the United States for the last, I don't know, World War II maybe, really stopped 
taking care of its infrastructure. We've allowed the country to just fall apart. And then in 70s, when we really started giving away industry to globalization, and then in the 80s, when we really, really went on steroids with becoming a net importer through the Cold War, and the 90s, when we pushed it out even further with free trade agreements, the United States has largely given up its industrial base. And as a result, supply chain issues can affect us adversely quickly. That's why that CHIPS Act was passed. Each of these things are a direct result of us giving up that. And we're looking over at China and Russia and all the rest of the countries that are coming together as one block because fuck the USA in their mind. Because we have been nothing but predators. And that hurts some poor nationalist ears and eyes. They can't imagine the U.S. being the bad guy. I'm so sorry to wake you up from your wide awake daydream. I'm making you have a wide awake nightmare. I'm sorry about that. Sorry, not sorry. But if you understand, the U.S. needed to demonize China and it needed to demonize Russia because its main threats to being able to rebuild itself and to be able to maintain any kind of hegemonic state dependent on putting distance between us. Folks instead got wrapped around the axle about Nazis. And I get it. Nazis are a gross thing, man. And yes, inadvertently, the United States, whenever it needs a help, goes out there and arms whatever right-wing prop up they can do. Okay. And, and it, it, it's traditional. It, it's, it's like almost like the, the playbook. We will always arm and prop up whoever it is that's standing in the way of any kind of socialist stuff. As you can see, the United States has been exporting neoliberalism to every country around the world. By exporting, I mean sending consultants in, sending the economic hitmen in, sending the IMF in to crush nascent socialist states. But yeah, sure, let's vote for a few more progressives. It'll change everything, I promise. Scouts honor. Let's just vote for a couple more progressives and everything. It will make all your wildest dreams come true. I'm promising you. That is the most neo-fucking just childlike understanding of the world we're in. It's unbearably naive. But because of our need to rebuild and to demonize these other countries so that we have a chance to lick our wounds and kind of develop our own little axis of evil ourselves, we have oppressed Europe to the point where it's ridiculous. We've made them dependent on us in a way that's not healthy, and they're hurting for it. But the rest of the world is starting to break away. Look at China and Russia and Iran. I mean, we are the bad guys here, folks. And as a result of our ignorance of economics, as a result of our ignorance of geopolitical stuff, as a result of our willingness to listen to establishment narratives from the mainstream, we lack the fundamental capability of fighting back, fighting the right enemy, fighting back and actually doing something. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Tom Cop. We got to look at this also. Invade Mexico. They nationalized oil. Everywhere somebody is doing right by themselves, the United States is there to offer a hand to fuck it up. That much we agree on. Where the problem lies is that they don't understand the economics. And the aftershocks of the decisions made by the Fed and the Treasury will be felt long after the decisions were made. So it's going to be up to us who have heard these things and know these things to carry forward when the time comes and recognize what the devil was. People trying to say cheap credit, cheap money, cheap this, cheap that. There are other things you can do. Like I know everybody sees that, you know, if there's a nail, you got to be a hammer kind of thing. But why do we always discipline on the spending side? Why do we always discipline on hurting the people instead of disciplining on the business side where we price cap things, where we literally regulate and do the necessary things to prevent 
why don't we put a maximum profit margin? And if they exceed that, they have to pay some stupid luxury tax like they do in the NFL or NBA or whatever. Why don't we have a luxury tax for people that are hoarding money for doing those things? Why don't we do something other than attack the poor and attack the working class? Why are we always there? That's the first mode of operation. Why? And I'll tell you why. It's capitalism. It's the capital order. It's austerity. It's neoliberalism. And it has nothing to do, by the way, with your hard-earned tax dollar whatsoever. So anyway, aftershocks, keep it in mind because they're going to come later. Bookmark this, remember it, when the layoffs really ensue. Because I've been through this before. And there was a time where I said, if I ever went through this before, I would rather hang, be, be some strange fruit in my backyard. If you know what I'm saying? I would much rather be strange fruit in the backyard than literally go through the layoff thing again that we went through during 08 and 09. I don't want to suffer that again, but I'm not going to. I'm going to fight through it. And I hope to God that people start fucking sharing shit and getting out of the echo chambers of these morons that talk about crazy nonsense with the Rothschilds and everything else and start focusing instead on actionable economics, understanding what we're in and taking the right steps and unifying, solidifying. And it's great that we're solid on geopolitics. Let's get solid on domestic economics. Let's start understanding the role that we have in the world economy and the, the local economy and the domestic national economy. We've got to start understanding. We must understand the federal government currency issuer, states currency users. And no matter how populist people are, no matter how nice they are, no matter how popular they are amongst their friends. If they don't understand the federal government is the one that creates the money and the states don't, they, they're doing us a disservice. And we must be prepared to fight back. We must be prepared to give an answer for the hope that lies within so that we can radicalize people so that they're willing to fight back. Because the truth is far, far more gross than the fucking misdirected lies and twisted versions of the world that many are sucking on to. Anyway, I'm Steve Grumbine. I'm hoping that while we do this show here that you guys will become subscribers. Folks, I, there's a lot of you all that are not subscribers. So you don't get the, the bell. You don't have the, the warning, the notifications. We're going live. We need your help, man. We need it. YouTube is suppressing us in a way that, I mean, like I sit there and show people, I'm like, look, watch. The, the subscribers go up to, it'll go down to, it'll go up to, it'll go down to. They literally keep us at the same spot now for almost eight months. Eight months, they've kept us right at the same spot. I don't know how it's possible, but they do. So I want you to understand without your help, I'm not talking about financial even. I'm talking about just helping us get the word out. They're going to suppress us, and all you're going to get is a bunch of people talking about the Rothschilds and, and all the other nonsense, and that's what's going to happen to our movement. They're going to be led astray, and by extension, we're going to be led astray with them. Can't have that. we got to fix it. We need help. Please help us. Please leave comments. That helps the stupid algorithm. I hate these algorithms, don't you? It's like the most ridiculous thing ever, but hey, we didn't ask to play their game, but we're playing on their platform in order to play on their platform. We need to play their game. So like it or lump it, we got to do it or we're going to fail. All right, there's that. The next thing is obviously, please consider becoming a monthly donor. We are a nonprofit. We have two nonprofits. We have Real Progress in Action, uh, which is a 501c4, and we are Real, Progr Real Progressives, which is a 501c3. If you'd like to donate to Real Progressives, it's tax deductible. Obviously, the 501c4 is not, but helps us right so please become a subscriber here as well uh, super chats help but nothing like becoming a monthly donor and we really need the help so with that i am steve grumbine and i think tomorrow we have macro and cheese we're going to have brian roman chuck talking about bank failures and we also have a clara mate on april 4th clara mate the capital order the austerity uh trinity is coming to talk to real progressives and an rp live you can go to our website, you can go to our calendar, events calendar, find the link, register, join us for that. Then we're going to have a Clara Mate Capital Order Book Club. 
and everybody that signs up, we're going to get you a book. So by all means, join up, become part of it. All right. We do good work, folks. We try really hard to do good work. We just need your support. We need your support. Anyway, with that, I think that I'm going to give you the, uh, yeah, I'm out of here. Yeah.